Hi, I'm Katie Lanier. I want to welcome you to this little introduction to flipped team-based learning. I teach physics at Collin College as a um, part-time instructor, and during the day I work with student services in Allen ISD. And before I worked there, worked there I was a physics teacher in Allen for a very long time where I used uh, flipped learning. And through that, I um, tried a whole lot of great things, and when I decided to teach at the local college, um, I was allowed to continue to teach in the flip method, but the trick was, what what am I going to do to fill that class time with meaningful work? And and there are some limitations to teaching at a college um, that you don't have in a in a well equipped high school. But basically, there was a bigger reason for choosing team based learning. We have um, a lot of examples, and we have a lot of uh, heavy math. And sometimes it's new and sometimes students need practice. And I think, you know, you can wrap your mind around it if you try to recall your own experiences in a traditional classroom. Um, for a class, it's tough. Could be physics, could be math, could be something other that's very analytical. Um, and you're sitting in the lecture and the lecture or the lesson is making total sense. Uh, you're following along, you're keeping up with all your notes, you're understanding all the examples, you're able to kind of follow along as the instructor works through, no problem, it all makes sense. And then you go home and you open up that textbook or you open up the internet service now and uh, you start to work on that assignment that's been given based on that amazing stuff that you learned and that made so much sense. And you get through the first three questions or problems and then somewhere along the way, they start to look like that had nothing to do with anything that was spoken about or presented or any information I had. There's, there's no way to solve it. And you hit a wall and you don't know what to do. You don't have anything in your notes to recall it. Well, now what do you do? And so using team-based learning, you can kind of give students that um, – study group work and guided work with coaching and some help in the classroom. And they're still getting all of the lesson material that they would have gotten with the lecture. So, so it does make for a nice match. Basically, team-based learning, it's a, it's a structured cooperative learning model. There are specific things that you do if you're doing team-based learning. If you just Google team-based learning on the internet, there's a, a cooperative that has a lot of information. Vanderbilt uses it, and they have um, team-based learning information for you. There's some other schools, too. You may even find that, that you, you work at a school that uses it or has, has kind of a model that they use. The flipped piece comes in because I ask my students to prepare before class and come to class ready to work with their teams. So how this looks, if you're thinking about the whole process, is the students are provided a lesson that they are to complete before they come to class. When they come into class, they, I assume that's all done. And we start off with, you know, do you have any questions? And usually they're good because they know the next step is they're going to work with their teams on a knowledge check. Are they really ready as a team? Can they start working together? It's kind of a mental warm up to get going. And, and that piece is actually graded, and I'll explain that um, later. Then after they complete that correctly, there's the key there, the correct piece, uh, then they move on to the team challenge, which are those harder problems, harder scenarios, things that would kind of fall into that category of, oh my gosh, I don't think I professor even talked about that in the lecture. The teacher even covered that. I don't know what to do. Those really, really hard things. And in this case, they can actually be harder than what you would test over them. Uh, so it's it's a very, very nice way to get the, the working with uh, the harder example problems. So as far as getting the teams ready, minus college team-based learning, this is a first-year physics class that I use it in. I use it in my um, trig-based, which is the college physics, and that's for the pre-med students and the non-engineers or physics majors. And I also use it in my first year physics majors class, which is calculus-based. And, and both, both classes enjoy it. My groups are four to seven students. I try to keep it around four or five. Um, seven is kind of big. So, but that's, you know, your call. What size classes are you working with? I keep them together for the whole length of the semester because of the limited times that we meet. I set group expectations um, and explain how they will be evaluated on their, their team performance and their evaluated um, team and individually. So that, that kind of makes it, you've got to be able to do, do your share. The, the grades are taken from the knowledge check 
and an evaluation that the team fills out for each other. So before class. So let's now you know what the teams are made up of. They stay the same the whole year or the whole semester. And so now before class, my flip lessons. And my flip lessons in high school, I provided video lessons that covered the material and a little quiz that followed up to double check to see what they had. College settings a little different. I do ask them, I give them the option of reading out of the textbook or watching the video lessons to cover the information they need in class. They also get a copy of the publisher's notes, uh, the lecture notes. I encourage them to make them their own as they go through it. So that's, they have the information that they need when they get to class. So the students are expected to take notes. They're also expected to be exposed to the material. I don't really expect a real deep understanding. I think that comes from the conversations that the students have while they're working on the, the check and challenge. And then I get to step in when we're doing the, the challenge. At the reading and video assignment, that thing that they do before class, I put in an individual knowledge check. And, and so that is a very, very short quiz, um, generally multiple choice. And it is just verifying basic understanding. Do you understand the vocabulary? Do you understand uh, the concepts at a very basic level? Do you understand the uh, equations and kind of give them a taste of what would be, you know, the easiest questions easier than you would ever see on a test. So these are the easiest questions, not quite as easy as were you awake while the video was playing, but really not that hard. So when they come in, they, they sit with their teams, they'll start off with a team knowledge check. And that is going to be something that is four or five questions long. It's very basic. And it is uh, kind of a intro level, but not as easy as that very, very basic level. So you're not quite applying things with, with the exception. You do some ranking tasks some basic calculations, but nothing that requires anything very deep. And then I always throw in some questions that will bring up misconceptions. I want those misconceptions to come up and have those conversations. So that, that is part of um, the knowledge check. Uh, then once the students get that completely correct, has to be completely correct, um, they move on to the team challenge. And the team challenge, um, about four problems. Of course, I've used one or two single problems. I know folks that have used case studies. It's a great thing to do a case study. Um, if this is at the end of a large unit, you could make it very, very big. But mine is every class period we're doing this, so we're taking it in little chunks. And so these are some of the harder problems that they're gonna see style-wise for the homework. And the hardest or harder than the test problems. So they get a feel for what they're gonna be checked on. And it gives me the opportunity to actually work with them and have them prove to me they can do the work, which is really what you want, because you want them to prove that they've learned the material and they can access it and apply it. And then the goal is to have um, a share and discuss. Hopefully when we get back into the real classroom, we'll be able to put that in place. You know, take, take a little bit of time to go through all the solutions and really, really dig in and make sure everybody has the right ideas before they move forward. So I hope this really has piqued your interest about what team-based learning is. And if you join me for the, the Flip Tech presentation, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the details of how to make this happen. And um, we're gonna talk a little about managing the process, types of questions for the knowledge check and the challenges, what you could do possibly. Uh, you'll get to try a few things and I promise it won't be all about physics. Uh, can be if you'd like, but it won't be all about physics. So don't, don't hesitate to uh, join in. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about how the students are assessed in this process. And I'm gonna add in some of the things about students have shared how they feel about it and kind of you know the things to watch for as you're moving through this process. So I, uh, I hope to see you at the presentation. Thanks a lot, bye-bye.